On Flow FM, another summer song series with Ellis. Yes, welcome back to the show. I'm now delighted to be joined by the Australian comedian Ibi Akbar. Ibi, welcome to the show. How are you? Good, man. Thank you for having me. I'm really, really excited to be here. Now, you are a man that is tracking beautifully on social media. You've got some uh, metrics that many people will be jealous about. And uh, you've got quite the interesting background too. But you're obviously, you know, you're a funny guy. That's your game. So tell us uh, how frustrating it's been throughout the last two years in this pandemic to not be able to sort of frequently go around making people laugh on stage? Look, man, it's been different. You know what I mean? Like for everyone right now, this is a whole new experience and it was a new experience for me as well. Like usually I'm locked in my room because my parents never used to let me out. Now I'm locked in the room because the government's not letting me out. So it was a bit of a new experience for me. But um, look, it, everything I feel like happens for a reason. Like everything that went, we all were going through, it all happens for, for a better reason. I feel like that's what I've been telling myself that's gotten me through it. And it's been hard, man. And look, when there's a disadvantage in one perspective, there's always an advantage from another perspective. Yes, we were, I wasn't able to do any gigs or my first shows or anything like that, but I was able to um, use the social media platforms that I have at my disposal much, much more and try to grow it from that perspective. So it's been a blessing in disguise. Let's move on. Now, if you can sort of sum up what, what kind of comedy act can audiences expect from you? Um, it's going to be a range of things. From my, Like if you look at my social media, I'm constantly doing skits and stuff. But when you come to my shows, what I'm trying to do is trying to get people to, to get to know me that little bit better. I talk about my personal life, talk about my views on society at the moment. You know, it, it's it's going to be great for everyone. I feel like a lot of people can relate though. Like, is that a thing that people sort of bring up, you know, when they come and sit in one of your shows, the fact that you, you're just relatable in terms of your humor? That, that's been my biggest advantage, I feel, to be honest with you. Like, with everything that I post or with everything that I have on stage, I try to make it as relatable as possible and I talk from real life experiences and that, that's what I've gathered that everyone's been saying to me afterwards. It's just so relatable with something that we can sort of look at and say, you know what, I've either gone through that or I'm going through that. It's just stuff that everyone can re- relate to on some level. So that's why I feel like it's doing so well. So I don't want to sound like a therapist all of a sudden, but, but tell us what, what it was like growing up. What kind of family did you grow up in? Oh, look, man, it's uh, good and bad. You know what I mean? An ethnic household, so you could expect <laughs> here and there. I know, or, or only too well. Don't worry, B. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But in saying that as well, everything, like I said, was a blessing in disguise. My parents, the way that they raised me, um, got me to where I am today. This really turned into a therapy session. But yeah, man, doctor, <laughs> I, I feel much better now. There you go. Probably weren't expecting that one. Let's talk about any outside influences you might have, Australian comedians or, or perhaps not Australians. Uh, is there anyone that you look up to, most? Yeah, man. Look, there's there's a number of comedians as you grow up, you watch and you sort of think to yourself, that's something that I want to do. Uh, the first, I remember the first sort of comedy special that I watched with Eddie Murphy's Delirious. And for me after that, I'm like, I need to do something, something with comedy. But there's there's a number of like the Carl Barons of the world, just that Aussie humour. Nothing will be better than that Aussie humour, no matter where you go in the world. But there's my, my biggest inspiration at the moment will probably have to be Dave Chappelle. Just the way he talks, just the way that he is, everything that he does, I feel like is, is groundbreaking. So for me, at the moment, Dave Chappelle, and he's been my sort of influence for a very long time, but um, there's a number of different comedians that I couldn't even tell you at the top of my head. There's a plethora of them. You know, it's funny you, you name dropped him because I was so tempted to reference him. You, you've just got a similar kind of face. It's just that face that is just waiting for people to explode in laughter, and it's it's a great thing. The ethnic comedy space, it's kind of taken off in Australia. So how do you crack this nut? Because, you, you know, we can talk all day about how you've got the advantages of, of being younger and, you know, prevalent on social social media but uh, there's quite a few sort of big names in Australia when it comes to the ethnic comedy space yeah look I feel like the ethnic comedy space is really taking off now to be honest with you um, there's my mates that are doing big shows at the moment Sushi Mango yep. um, so they're doing great things uh, there's a Neil Cole Hatkers that are sort of broken in earlier than all of us so there's a number of different ethnic people that are sort of coming into this space because I feel like growing up now we've had our we've had our time growing up and there's this new wave of comedians and people that are coming through that have lived somewhat of a double life so and I feel like that community is growing tenfold. So I think it's something that everyone can relate to. And that's why people sort of gravitate towards my comedy as well, because it, I look like their cousin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, spot on. We love to hear it. Now, I've got to ask you, it'd be a bit of a left field question here. Uh, you know, you, you don't do something that many people do. I mean, you literally have to kind of burden yourself knowing that you've got an hour or half an hour or however long it is that you're given to go out and make people laugh. Now, it comes pretty naturally to funny people, obviously, but does it weigh on your mind much 
you know, leading into a gig at all? I feel like it did. It did weigh in my mind before I did the show because I had never done any comedy shows in my life ever. My first ever show was two weeks ago to a crowd of 750 people. So for me, it was like, it was a whole new experience. But I can tell you now that before the show, I actually wasn't nervous. I don't know. i got to go to the doctor, checked out, because it was extremely weird. I didn't feel any nerves. It was just excitement. And th- the reality was that's what something that I, I thought could happen as well because this is something that I've been looking forward to my entire childhood. I've been waiting for the moment that I could just go on stage and have that laughter hit me like a dad slap in the face. That's how hard it hit me, you know? So for me, it was just a long time coming and, and it was just pure excitement. There, was, there wasn't there nerves, which is really weird. There you go, folks. Well, I've got to ask, I mean, you spoke there about not having done too many live gigs, but where did the time sort of go from just being like a, a meme on social media in your own circles to now amassing some 80, 90,000 views per video? I mean, that's quite extraordinary. Do, do you sit back and think about that at all? Yeah, I feel like you always got to sit there and appreciate how far you've come. But in saying that as well, the goals that we set for ourselves, like for me right now, this is only the beginning. This is only the beginning of my career because this is the first time I've done any comedy gig. So for, to be able to look at it in hindsight and say, wow, I just was making videos in my room and now I'm performing in front of hundreds of people, thousands of people next week in Sydney and then in Adelaide as well. That for me is a surreal feeling and I'll forever be grateful for even if one person was to come to my show or thousands of people were to come to my show, I will forever be grateful for that. Now we've seen uh, ethnic comedians from Australia go on and make a big deal of themselves internationally. Do you have aspirations to, to eventually crack it overseas as well? Three years three years and we'll have another interview and we'll say hey remember that time I said that I'll be international in three years I am planning to go international so let's hopefully just take over the Australian market first and then from there I'm going international baby there we go now Ibi Akbar it's been great speaking to you you've got a jam-packed schedule coming up so tell us about some of the places that uh, you're looking forward to going and uh, I'm sure you have everyone in stitches yeah look I've just done my four Melbourne shows and one Brisbane show so that would gain all of them Um, next week so on the uh, I start my Sydney shows on the 1st and 2nd. From there, I go to Gold Coast. Then on the 10th of February is when I'm coming to Adelaide at the Dunstan Playhouse. Sounds like some sort of nightclub or something, but... <laughs> I can assure you it's not, but you might think it is when you get there. <laughs> yeah. But um, I'm really looking forward to it, man. I've been to Adelaide before, and I'm super, super excited to actually have the people that want to see me live come to the show. So I'm, I'm, I'm super looking forward to it. Well, folks, get online, get booking, get following the great Ibi Akbar on social media. He's a very funny man. Ibi, it's been great catching up with you all the very best with everything you've got a very interesting career plight i look very much forward to seeing where you are in three years and hopefully we can uh, speak to one another sooner than then but uh, all the very best and thanks for joining us here on the flow thank you so much for having me i really really appreciate it man